Okay, this is case of the week, medullary sponge kidney. I'm Dr. Dan Koval from Radiologist HQ. Let's take a look at the case and then I'll review some key learning points at the end. So we'll start with a sagittal view of the right kidney on ultrasound. You can see here's the liver and then the renal cortex looks normal, but then the renal pyramids are markedly echogenic with this posterior acoustic shadowing. And we can see just how dense that posterior acoustic shadowing is on this image. And we also see that on the transverse images of the right kidney. The left kidney looks similar. The renal cortex is normal, but then we have these really echogenic pyramids with this poster acoustic shadowing. On this image, you can see just how triangular and echogenic these pyramids appear, but the intervening cortex appears normal. So that tells you we're dealing with medullary nephrocalcinosis, not cortical nephrocalcinosis. And again, look at how dense that poster acoustic shadowing is on this transverse image. When we add color Doppler, what do we see here? Well, this is marked twinkle or twinkling artifact. It almost looks like turbulent blood flow, right? But it's actually due to the fact that the ultrasound beam is hitting these dense calcifications and getting distorted. Notice also that the focal zone is actually positioned below the area of interest, and that's a way to maximize twinkle artifact on color Doppler. And that's different than if you're trying to maximize posterior acoustic shadowing of a renal stone on grayscale imaging, right? You actually want to line up the focal zone with the area of interest but different for color Doppler twinkle artifact. Here we also see again that marked twinkle artifact secondary to the very dense calcification. Now let's look at the CT scan for this patient. This is an intravenous contrast enhanced scan of the upper abdomen, just some landmarks. There's the liver, right portal vein, the spleen, there's the left adrenal gland in the stomach. As we scroll inferiorly, you can see this marked calcification there scattered about the renal pyramids bilaterally. Also, we see these cystic changes, some of which have this layering milk of calcium, which goes along with the medullary sponge kidney that we're seeing. There's another cystic area with layering milk of calcium. So we have calcifications with areas of marked renal tubular ectasia. And again, notice how the renal cortex looks intact. It's really just a disease of the medullary pyramids. Now, let's look at the coronal reformatted images for the CT scan. Some landmarks, there's the liver and the main portal vein. There's the bladder and the pubic symphysis. As we scroll posteriorly, Look at how extensive that calcification is scattered throughout the medullary pyramids of the kidneys bilaterally. And also notice the cystic dilatation surrounding these stones. Now looking at the bone windows, which brings out the bony structures such as the spine and the pelvic bones much more sharply, we also see the nature of this calcification. It looks somewhat linear and globular because it's forming within and about these dilated ectatic renal tubules at the level of the medullary pyramids. This is a multi-planar volume reformatted image in the coronal plane made from that CT scan, and it gives us the appearance of an abdominal x-ray. And you can again see the linear globular nature of these calcifications deposited within the medullary pyramids. And that's even more dramatic on this maximum intensity projection image, which actually takes the highest attenuation value in each voxel and magnifies it. So anything dense like the bony structures and these calcifications will really stand out. Let's take a look at some key points for medullary sponge kidney, and you can also find these in the episode show notes. So it's a developmental ectasia causing cystic dilatation of the collecting tubules in the pyramids, causing calcium deposition and medullary nephrocalcinosis. Now there's a differential for medullary nephrocalcinosis. Not all cases are due to medullary sponge kidney. Can you name the most common cause in adults? Yes, hyperparathyroidism. Also renal tubular acidosis, specifically the type one or the distal type, medullary sponge kidney, hypervitaminosis D, which is basically excessive vitamin D, anything that causes hypercalcemia, and then sarcoidosis, among other causes. Now, if we're specifically looking at medullary sponge kidney, that often occurs sporadically, but it can be associated with other syndromes. Can you name a syndrome that it can sometimes be associated with? Perhaps you named Beckwith-Wiedemann syndrome, congenital hymen hypertrophy, Caroli disease, or Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, among others. So these are all quite rare. And don't feel bad if you couldn't name any. In this case, you may have noticed that the kidneys were rather large, and that's because of the association with Beckwith-Wiedemann syndrome, which is an overgrowth syndrome. So for 300 bonus points, what type of colodocal cyst is Caroli disease in the Todani classification? Yes, type 5. Excellent. <laughs> Now, on ultrasound, the renal pyramids will look echogenic. And interestingly, mild medullary nephrocalcinosis is actually better seen on ultrasound than on CT. So go ultrasound. <laughs> and don't let that dissuade you then when you see what looks like striking medullary nephrocalcinosis on ultrasound, but the CT appearance is underwhelming. In the early stages on ultrasound, the pyramids will be peripherally echogenic and centrally hypoechoic. As the disease evolves, the pyramids will become diffusely echogenic. And with progressive calcification, that's when you'll start to see the posterior acoustic shadowing, as in this case. So this case was an example of rather severe medullary sponge kidney. On CT scan, you'll see renal calculi scattered within a medullary distribution. 
You might see a striated nephrogram where you have the enhancing renal parenchyma surrounding the non-enhancing cystic dilated tubules. And then on the later excretory phase, when the contrast starts getting excreted into those dilated cystic tubules, because they're arranged in a somewhat linear globular array, you might see a paintbrush appearance. Sometimes that's also called the growing calculus sign because you have a calculus on the earlier phase series that then seems to enlarge as the excreted contrast into those dilated cystic tubules surrounding the calculus starts to fill in, also hyperdense. Just to clarify, in this case, I did not show you the excretory phase. That usually starts about three minutes after the time of contrast. Now, these patients can be asymptomatic, particularly if it's mild medullary nephrocalcinosis, but when they become symptomatic, it's due to the renal stones. So patients might have hematuria or obstruction. This patient actually presented at a different time to the emergency department with right-sided flank pain, and you can notice that the right kidney now seems a bit larger than the left, and there's this right-sided perinephric stranding. As we scroll inferiorly, we see that stranding and also some mild hydronephrosis on the right, and you can see why it's due to this obstructing calculus within the distal right ureter here. On the coronal image, we see again that right calculus in the distal ureter, and again the mild right hydronephrosis. Thank you for watching Case of the Week, Medullary Sponge Kidney. You can catch these lectures each week by subscribing to our video podcast, YouTube channel, or by following on social media, where it would be magnificent if you shared with a friend or left a review. Until next time, remember, radiology is life.